Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're going to talk about electrophilic aromatic substitution. Which, because that's a lot of words to say at once, we abbreviate as EAS often for the electrophilic aromatic substitution. All right, cool. What this does is it essentially replaces, it takes some electrophile and replaces an H or a proton on the benzene ring with said electrophile, okay? So, in other words, here's kind of the general mechanism that we're going to be looking at. Here's H, and here's my electrophile, right? And as we well know, the pi bonds in the lovely benzene ring can act as nucleophiles, and they do. So they're going to form an attachment to that, a new bond with that electrophile. That electrophile, I didn't do anything to these by the way, is going to attach because it's the first thing that adds on to the same side as an H and then you're going to form the plus on the opposite side, so a, a carbocation. However, the interesting that hap thing that happens here is that there's a lot of resonance that can happen with that plus, especially in a ring. Okay, so in other words, what could happen here? Well, you could have this double bond move to capture that plus, and when that happens, right, and my H and my E here, I didn't do anything with this double bond, but I moved this double bond over to make that plus go away, but it just moved the plus to right there, right? And then I can also, and this is, by the way, this has a uh, specific name, but we'll get to that. We could do the same thing with that double bond now, right? So I can, I didn't do anything with this double bond, but now I moved that double bond. And the plus could move right there, okay? And all of this, is happening in resonance forms, which it means it's usually happening pretty rapidly and it's assuming all forms on a regular basis. Ideally, folks, the benzene ring would like to reform because benzene in its aromatic state is particularly stable, you know, and we would like to get that back. So what happens here is that a base comes along, some base, don't know what that base is, but let's, let's say it has a lone pair and is ready to take on an H, right? That base is going to come along, which that would be a Lewis base, and a nucleophile. It's going to attack this H, and the H is going to go back. The bond that was originally between the ring and the H is going to go back as a double bond, and out of all of this, we're going to reform the ring with essentially the E, the electrophile, having taken the place of the H. Okay? All right. In the midst of these resonance structures, you have, of course, what we call the sigma complex and some other names for things. All of these nomenclature things will become more clear as we go along. Okay? But that's basically the reaction. Now the interesting thing about this is that the electrophiles that we use are things like, here's some sample electrophiles, right? We have things like Br2 with FeBr3 or AlBr3. That could be one. Two, you could do Cl2 with the same exact kind of thing, except it's usually AlCl3. 
You could have, let me do a different moment since I'm getting kind of squeaky here, HNO3 and H2SO4. Okay, you could have fuming H2SO4. You could have the Friedel Crafts editions, right? Which we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about, which are where you have some kind of alkyl group on that CL. Instead of two CLs, you have an alkyl group with the CL and then the ALCL3. You could have, that's Friedel Crafts alkylation. You could have Friedel Crafts acylation, where this could be some kind of um, it doesn't have to be a CH3, it could be all kinds of things with AL, CL3, so on and so forth, on and on and on and on. And you say to yourself, well, those are weird electrophiles, and you're right. They are weird electrophiles because just as they are, if you just threw BR2 into uh, uh, some kind of container that also has benzene, a benzene ring, it's not going to react. So what is all of this mess for? The reason why we have this kind of, uh, all of these different reagents is to make the electrophile particularly interesting to the benzene ring. And that's what you're going to spend a lot of time doing. Once you, if you got this part down, you got basically electrophilic aromatic substitution down. But you really have to focus on making that look really so interesting that the benzene ring, which is pretty stable just as it is, will want to attack it and then go through all of this. Okay, so that's what we spend a lot of our time in electrophilic aromatic substitution talking about. We'll talk about mechanisms. They all kind of look the same as this, except for the preparation of the electrophile, which changes depending on what you're using, okay? We will be spending our time really talking about Friedel Crafts, right? The Friedel Crafts reactions. And the reason why we'll spend so much time talking about Friedel Crafts as if it's the most awesome thing that ever existed is because it is a carbon to carbon forming bond. It's a way, it's a reaction that forms carbon to carbon bonds. And we have like two of those, right? We have, uh, well, actually, we have three now. Someone reminded me of this the other day. We have the acetylene anion, right? So where we take off the last, if we have a terminal alkyne and we take off the last H and make it into a lone pair and then that can go through an SN2, that's one of them. Two is the Grignard rea reactions, right? The Grignard reagents are required. You have to have like an epoxide or a carbonyl of some, some sort at this point in order to make that happen. Uh, we have Diels Alder, which because it makes a new ring, it makes a cyclized version, it creates new carbon carbon bonds. Okay, and now we're going to have Friedel Crafts. That's four reactions that make carbon carbon bonds. And often when we're making these big natural products, we want to be able to make carbon to carbon bonds, which makes those so special. Okay, so until next time, we'll talk more about Friedel Crafts. We'll talk more about the electrophiles that I wrote up here. We'll talk more about electrophilic aromatic substitution, but that's the beginning. All right, until next time, I bid you adieu.